six. Seven. <laughs> Eight. Twenty-seven. That's how old this building is. The members of provincial parliament have been gathering in this building. You guys are a robotics team, right? So maybe we can say, I have an idea. We everybody, or like the STEM program, it's a mandatory course to take robotics. Okay, let's say it's that idea. So then, he, so MPP Parsa brings it into the house. He talks to the rest of the MPPs. The pages are the messengers of the house. They go around handing out paper. You can correct me if I'm wrong. They go around putting water, right? They pass notes. They give papers to the Hansards. You cannot pass in this route right here. And when somebody does, everyone's like, oh. Because it's like, here is the speaker. Here is the mace. The speaker needs to be able to see the mace at all times. If you're passing through, you are impeding that power. So it's like, oh my goodness. And so over here, continue, we have the Hansard recorders. Yes, I'm right. Is that a passageway above, like, this? Right here? Yeah. So this is the press gallery. So you know how this chamber is always on TV? Yeah. That's where all the media people and reporters sit. Actually, and across from it, which you will see, so this is the press gallery. On the other side, we have the speaker's gallery. So for instance, when there's a delegation that comes, they sit in the speaker's gallery, like VIP guests, basically. Light or neutral colors. Exactly, neutral colors. So we bring neutral, we help out everybody. So that's just so you understand that this parliament building, myself and everybody here who works here, we work for parliament. We work for everybody who works in this old, who was in this building, right? So we respect everybody, we love everybody, and we make sure everybody gets everything that they need, right? And then another thing, so do we might know how the speaker is elected? Because I like the story I'll tell you after. Oh, okay, I'll tell you the story, I really like the story. So in general, speaker, or the Honorable Ted Arnett, okay, in general, was a part of the government. He was a PC for the riding of Wellington. So if you look up, we have our women in the parliament. So the very first MPP, female MPP, they were elected in 1943, Agnes McPhail and Ray Morris Lukoff. Now before, in general, women could vote in 1917. So it took a very long time for women to become a parliament. And it just keeps going. Now over here, in general, the sergeant at arms we're talking about her, she's the first sergeant at arms as a female sergeant at arms. So it's very special. You are currently on the original side of the building. Now, the reason why I like to stop here is because look, you are basically looking through the lens of history 127 years of history, almost 127. Now, in general, the architect Richard Wade. He was behind these plans. We have five cameras. And this is the control center. Everything that's being controlled in the chamber for the cameras is up here. We wouldn't have this building today if the sparks also caught into the chamber, right? And we've had, throughout human history, we've had many, many fires. And so this one, they did their best. I guess they were very, they were really courageous in my opinion, to make sure that it doesn't get into the chamber. It stops right here. And so this is real imported Italian marble. I want you to look down. What do you notice about these pieces? They're very small. Because every one of them was handcrafted and hand placed one by one. It's a mosaic. And it took a year just to do the floor. Three years to do the wing, but a year to do the floor. Can you imagine? Very creative, though. Now I want you to look back. Remember I was talking about, in general, the coat of arms? So you have the deer, the bear, the moose. Those are animals of abundance in Ontario. 1867 is the time of Confederation. And over here, you're probably wondering, well, why do we have two maces? This is the original mace featured in 1792. It's 226 just keep winning, Minister. <laughs>
Oh, that's great. Thank you. Wow. We're so proud of you. The problem that we've identified is accessibility. So people without accessible parking permits are parking in the designated spots with false uh -huh. access when people back to meet them. Uh -huh. So this leads to seniors and people with disabilities from staying in their home, which uh, decreases mental health and uh, reduces longevity and technology, which basically uh, we program it to search for the words accessible parking permit of the car that drives into the spot. So the way that it works is the person driving into the spot, uh, if they have an accessible parking permit, the a green light that will appear on the top here. And if no valid permit is detected, then a message say no valid permit detected it will be red light to be displayed. So after three minutes, if the person with an accessible parking permit is still in that spot, the camera will record the license plate and the motor vehicle will be fine. And we are almost three million seniors, many seniors regularly they come up with disability, right? This kind of thing will provide to protect people with disability, right? And I'm really impressed. Congratulations, Ethan. Well done. <laughs>